Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Beverly DeGale. And I'm Warren Lewis. And we are the co-founders of the ACLT charity, a charity that was set up just under 25 years ago, following a diagnosis of acute leukemia for our six-year-old son, Daniel DeGale. He urgently needed a matching bone marrow donor. And because of a lack of black and black mixed race people on the world registers, we set up the ACLT to find our fen to find our son's donor, but also to assist other people in the UK and around the world. We also register blood donors and organ donors. So tonight we are going to be uh, speaking to these two young men, um, Sean and Craig McNuff. And um, first of all, we're going to give you, a, forgive the pun, a flavour of what uh, tonight's about um, and a bit of their profile. So Original Flavour is a Caribbean food and lifestyle platform bringing delicious and authentic modern and made easy step-by-step -step Caribbean recipes to our kitchen. Founded by brothers Sean and Craig McEnough from South London and of Jamaican descent, they started Original Flavour videos online in March 2016. They were... Uh, they were taught at a young age how to cook traditional Caribbean food and so decided to take advantage of the social media era and make a business out of something they enjoy. In university and in their early 20s, they had been showing friends how to make signature Caribbean dishes and then had an idea to turn it into a video to showcase to people online. And in 2016, they put out their first video on Facebook. Um, which got 1 million views in the first week. The videos eventually went viral and their online following hit 70,000 plus in one month. And now they have 300,000 followers. Their passion was inspired from their mother and grandmother's mouth-watering cooking. Meal times were an occasion not to be missed growing up. Their love for food grew from eating to cooking and adding their own twist to the traditional dishes of the Caribbean. Sean and Craig have since received worldwide recognition and features on news outlets such as BBC, Channel 4, Nike, Google, YouTube, BuzzFeed, BET Network, London Live and Represent Radio, as well as other platforms. And in 2017, they self-published publish their first cookbook uh, thanks to a Kickstarter campaign that raised over £14,000. And it turned into an Amazon bestseller, which the brothers still still can't quite get their head around how that happened, but it did. They've since uh, sold over 3,000 copies of their cookbook, and uh, the videos are watched by people from around the world on so many different platforms, YouTube, their website, Facebook, their Instagram. They've got a great following. Um, just to give you an idea of what they're about, let's... Let's listen to the guys themselves. Hey, I'm Craig. Hey, I'm and Craig. I'm Sean. And, and I'm Sean. Co-founders and co-founders of Original Favour. Of Original Favour. This is Fulton Heath, this is Fulton South Heath, London. South the London. The place where we grew up. The place where we grew up. Our love and shaped our love for food and cooking. Food and cooking. From going down to our From local butchers, to, our local butchers, to picking up fresh picking produce, up fresh and produce, making a delicious and meal, a delicious for, meal our family for our at home. family at home. Just like how mum and like grandma taught us. We started original we started original from flavor. grandma's from home. Grandma's yeah, home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And with the help of you, with guys, the help of you, we've guys, gained over six hundred thousand followers, followers, ninety million videos, ninety million videos, two best-selling, best-selling. Best we featured on some of the biggest, some of the biggest media platforms, media platforms in the UK, in the UK, and abroad as well, and abroad as well. In the food world, in the food we believe world, in supporting we believe the, in underrepresented. the underrepresented. We'll be showcasing, we'll be showcasing raw, authentic raw and talent. authentic talent. We've talked to kids from our community, to, from our in community, the UK and Jamaica. UK and Jamaica. We believe up and coming believe chefs up and coming should be able to see should people, be able to see that look like them that look like them. On You've screen. helped us get to You've where we are. Get to where we are. And we want you. And we want to continue, to continue on this journey. On this journey. We'll be raising money. 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 We'
more that tasty recipes, more tasty recipes, cooking courses, cooking courses, shows, cooking academies, shows, and academies, opportunities and opportunities for young chefs. For young with the money chefs. raised, with the money we'll raised, trained and, and give scholarships, and give scholarships, up and coming chefs, up and coming who chefs, who don't get the same opportunities, the same opportunities in the mainstream. In the mainstream. And we need your help. We need your to raise help funds to raise this all happen. Make this all happen. Come and join us. Come and join us. Be a part of our story. So you've heard about what the guys are saying about you know, Font and Heath, their manner, and what they're doing. But um, let's let's bring them into the conversation and give them a big welcome. Um, welcome to Craig and Sean. How are you doing, guys? Oops. We can't hear you. Unmute. Uh -huh. There you go. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> See, you're used to having a wooden spoon in your hand. That's uh, right. Maybe doing the engineering bits for you, having uh, it done for you. Oh, bless uh, you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Happy to be here, you know. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Amazing. Thanks for having us. Yeah, as I was saying just now, Fountain Heath, your manor, it's it's the ACLT's manor. That we're, 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 that's where we are. That's, that's our base, going out into the world and doing what we do. So it's really? like homecoming. That's right. It's true. Yeah, we've heard about you guys for years, you know, so it's so good to, you know, finally do something together. So, yeah. You know, well, firstly, yeah. you guys are doing an amazing job, you know. Sure. You and the team, you know, bring the great awareness to the ACLT, which is very important. Yeah. So Thank, thank you. So let's start before you guys become famous. Obviously, you were just two regular young young boys um, growing up in, in, in Fountain Heath. We still are. Not that young. <laughs> Look at this beautiful picture. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> you can see which one is which one is which. So the one on my right is definitely Craig. Yes, that's right. How can you tell? <laughs> because you've got, small, you've got the smaller head. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way of <laughs> memories, man. So many memories, man. Yeah. So what, what was it like growing up um, in Fountain Heath back in the day? I mean, it was amazing, you know. You know, you know, you know, Fountain Heath is, you know, thriving with so much Caribbean food and, you know, amazing personalities. It kind of reminds you of Jamaica sometimes, yeah. you know, the personalities and the people. Um, I mean, we were surrounded by Caribbean food, jerk chicken shop by the corner, corner field just across the road. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So... As well as our parents and our grandmother, just going out on the high street, you can't get away from it. So that definitely inspired us to do what we do, and you know, just meeting the locals, you know, meeting the the the, the, it to the Asian produce, like getting familiar with people and just having that relationship. Because as well as the food, it's, it's all about the process, meeting the right people, meeting, the, getting the right food and the quality of food and the produce. So yeah, it was, it was, it was an amazing experience growing up in Fort Heath. You know, a lot of trials and tribulations, but, you know. And, and interesting, you mentioned uh, family. Um, this picture, for me, sums it up. I mean, the, where, the, at, where the learnings come from, the generations. Look at your gran and your mum, and they look so proud of you. Look, they look 21, isn't it? They look young. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah. Yeah, so how much influence have your 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 the two ladies the two senior ladies in your lives, how, how much influence have they had on you both? You know, it's, there's not a not a, a term or a word to be able to, to justify it correctly. You know, it's such a massive influence on us both, um, you know, morally, spiritually, um, emotionally, you know, so much different ways, you know, so we kind of owe um, inspiration from creating original favour to them for sure. Um, because that's where we kind of birthed our love for cooking. What age did you both um, first go into the kitchen? I mean, it could have been as young as six to seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't mean they were actually cooking, because at that age, we were kind of like just taking orders, you know, taking dessert orders, <laughs> yeah. like washing up plates. I was going to ask you about the washing up of plates. <laughs> yeah. Setting the table, you know. That's how you get into the kitchen, like KP. I know yeah. many chefs out there will know, you start off as a KP, kitchen porter, and then kind of just right. over 
things. Yeah. So we kind of just oversaw like our grandmother and mum cooking in the kitchen and just, you know, giving us all the all the all the rubbish jobs, like peeling the potatoes. Yeah. yeah. It was great because we were able to see the amazing work they've done. Yeah. That's the best way to start though. You you start from the ground and you work your way up. You know, and I'm sure that with your children, as they get older, they will learn in exactly the same way that your mum and your nan showed you. Absolutely. Sure, sure, definitely. definitely. So, so talking about the, the food, I mean, this is a staple meal oh very God. much in, 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 in the black community. I'm absolutely salivating <laughs> looking at this. <laughs> you know, this meal just says Sunday dinner. Absolutely. My no. sister, one of my sister, Angela, she will completely agree with you. This is what she cooks every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. It, it brings so much memory just looking at the plate, you know, just the colours yeah. of it, um, you know, the textures of the food, you know, what goes with what coleslaw. Obviously, that's definitely for Sunday. You know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but coleslaw only comes out on special occasions. Yeah. I know, like the whole day's coleslaw anyway, oh, like a yeah. Sunday or like a festive yeah. or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's what we grew up on. And um, yeah, frankly, a lot of people do as well. Well, it, it wouldn't be, well, we don't so, <laughs> I'm almost <laughs> embarrassed to say this, but we don't cook so much Caribbean food. Not anymore. Not anymore in our house. Yeah. But when we do, it yeah. is an absolute joy. And I think it makes it that much more special for us. If my family are listening, they're laughing because they know what I'm like. But yeah. Obviously, we love Caribbean food. We just don't get to it as often as we would yeah, like to. We have, we have to watch the pounds. Like when you get to our age, you have to watch the pounds. Yeah. Not only in the cash yeah. amount, but the actual physical amount. And <laughs> weigh down with it. Yeah. In cooking. Always great to save it to a special occasion, yeah. like you guys do. Yeah, that's what we're saying. It's always you're in a special occasion, you kind of bring out, you know, the, the full, you know, yes. shabang sort of thing. It's only yeah. special occasions. You know, you can't really eat that every, every day. day no. um, you know, that's why we have vegetarian recipes in our dishes, I mean, our lifestyle as well, vegan, vegan as well. Yeah, so, we want to talk to you about those as well. Yeah, so you, you're, you're well known for these great dishes um, that, like I say, the, the community knows, but we've never really shone, a, or, or externally, no one's really shone a light on Caribbean cooking as such. And you guys are really the pacemakers very much on that um, well well, well you, you've had we've had previously the likes of um ainsley harriet i think is and what was that lady who used to do that show on itv from birmingham from birmingham oh yeah you've, yeah. Had, you've had the likes of them but it was always diluted i think you won't know you're too young you're too young <laughs> you're too young but orin's right really you guys are put in the spotlight on caribbean cooking and we want to see you more so. You should be more on, at some point, you've got to hit mainstream and be doing programs. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that, you know, when you brought up the, 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 your books, um, what, what was the reaction to it seems to be, seems to have accelerated very much on social media. Give us a flavor of what it felt like being in the zone, in the bubble when that was happening. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, because, you know, everything we learned from my mum and grandmother we were able to put to light, you know. It's just kind of like a natural thing, like growing up on Caribbean food, we kind of never thought that we were able to be in a position to be in the mainstream mm -hmm. or show it to people. But, um, you know, it just comes natural, you know. It's our love and our passion kind of just shines through. Like, I think our connection with me and my brother, like, we were very close growing up. And I think the food kind of shows through that as well. Kind of that connection that we've got through food, bringing people together, putting smiles on people's faces. That's what it's all about. But you, as well as cooking the food now, you have to present yourselves to your audiences. How did you find that when you first started? And how are you how are you moving forward with it? Are you finding I, it easy? I think, you know, having us together, like each other, has helped as well. You know, sometimes, you know, we get um, chefs or um, food influencers that are by themselves. So maybe they would have a different type of outlook to us. But... Like my brother says, we've had each other and, you know, we're used to each other and we've had a great relationship. So that made it a lot easier as well. Yeah. So, and just how we grew as well was very organic. So we never really was trying to be something that we weren't. So we yeah. were always trying to be ourselves. 
So hopefully that is um, that is kind of portrayed in our in our work, in our videos, in our recipes. Yeah. Mm. I read on in somewhere that in your I think it, I don't know if it's your first book you had seventy recipes is that right? Your yeah, first one, yeah. Yeah, and are those recipes that you already knew, or are they ones that you had to develop as part of what you you know of, of, for the book? I think it's definitely ones that we knew like growing up. I think the first book's all about the the staple Jamaican Caribbean dishes, and we've kind of just put our little twist on it. Yeah. Make it accessible. Yeah. Green. Yeah, you can see there, yeah. To make it accessible to people that maybe not don't know. So we kind of had an eye on that as well because we knew that the book would be going out to thousands of people. So we made it definitely accessible ingredients-wise as well, giving the alternatives. You know, not many people know about, you know, to, to making ingredients and you know you can't get certain ingredients, fresh ones from here. So we gave alternatives. So making it accessible for everyone, right. you know. Of course, Beverly's, Beverly's always saying to me, vegan, vegan, vegan. <laughs> vegan sort of food. And so I wanted to, to see, you know, I mean, this was something else. So just the mix of this recipe is just um, something else. Give, give, us a, give us an idea how is this, uh, what's the, what's the, the thinking the, the, behind this? So this is an insp inspiration from, you know, um, Japanese. Because Japanese have the, the ramen. So we've kind of fused together the Itel Rastafarian movement with the pumpkin, um, with the coconut in like infused flavor, because that that noodle soup is mm. infused with coconut and spices, cos bonnets. So mm. yeah, basically blended Japanese and Caribbean together, and that's what we do in a lot of our dishes as well. You know, Jamaica is all about bringing people together. You know, as you may know, Jamaica's motto out of many one people, mm. and there's a lot of different cuisines that from the slave trade. You know that came from, from different areas, Asian, Indian, you know, you know, everyone, African, yeah, true, yeah. they came over and traded different foods. Mm -hmm. So that's why Jamaica is so amazing in terms of the food. So that that dish that we just had up on the screen, is that yeah. your, did you did, did you make this or is, or is this something that you um, had seen somewhere else? Yeah, we got inspiration from obviously the Japanese cooking, but we yeah. put our own little twist in it by making it like a, a, a Caribbean inspired with the pumpkin, with the, the coconut, scotch bonnet, and we've got some corn in there as well, and little 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 segments or things to make it a bit more you know, Caribbean inspired. So it's definitely I really, I really struggle to get Orin to consider having a meal any evening that does not have fish or meat in it. So Ch chicken, I, I don't eat too much red meat. It's well, mainly chicken and fish. To be fair, we don't eat much red meat now. It's a luxury if we do. So we're we're kind of getting we're moving along slowly. But if you had to, if I asked you to try and explain to Orin why it's good not to to eat ital every now and again, <laughs> could you just give it to him in a <laughs> sentence and help me along a little bit? I think you know, um, in life, it's good to have balance and everything. It's good to have, you know, um, a balance of different types of things in order to, to get the best out of whatever it is that you're actually doing. So in this case, your body, it's good to have balance and able for you to get the best out of your body. So sometimes it's not good to just have meat or just fish. Sometimes, yeah. it's good to, you know, switch it up a bit. Switch you know, it up a bit. Yeah. Dinner, um, look, it, it's a bit better for your heart. It's also better for your energy as well. And just your overall health, your cholesterol level as well, just to be able to have balance um, in those areas as well. So that's why we 100% um, recommend having a balance and introducing ital um, inspired food, i.e. vegan food, into your diet. Right. Are you, you persuaded? You, 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 are you taking notes? I'm taking you're, you're, notes. You're, you're, you're going to cook no, it. No, it's okay. I don't mind cooking it. It's just trying to get him to eat, the, eat it without <laughs> meat. Our dad, our, dad is, our dad is like that as well. Our father, right. you know, um, God bless him. Like he's my mother often cooks for him, and he like you know persisted before that like it has to be meat sort of thing, it has to be fish. Um, but you know he's a lot more so open now. Yeah. He's a lot more open. He sees my mom. My mother is a vegan as well. So he sees your mum is a, your mum is vegan. One hundred percent. Three years ago, he turned to vegan. Wow. And yeah, and obviously my dad sees that as well. So yeah. So yes. Well, I'll let you know how I get on. 
Put it in there. Pretend, just tell them it's fried chicken, more. <laughs> <laughs> Really, it's just you know, you know, it's all about flavor, and it's all how you season it and how you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. The, no. okay, the, the challenge is <laughs> on, the challenge is on, the challenge is on. We're glad, yeah. we're glad to know that we're actually working on a, um, a third book, totally. Okay. Yeah, so oh, that's know. interesting because we were just going to ask you about the second book, is that yeah, right? Yeah. And then we should talk about your, you're working on a third book as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. we are, that's right. So. Yeah. But, Good to know. Christmas presents. Well, that should hopefully push you toward doing more of this sort of thing. The the sort of the mainstream news um, channels, um, platforms, because we need to see more of you and and and, uh, and your peers. You know, I, I want to be watching you guys on, on Saturday's Saturday morning. kitchen. Yeah, Saturday want to see you on kitchen Saturday's things kitchen. Like, things like that. Want to see you on James Martin, which is on ITV, and also. Sunday brunch on Channel Four. Yeah, Ooh. you'll see us there. We'll sure. be there soon. Man. You'll see us there. But we've we've been, to be honest, we've been really, um, um, you know, I want to say lucky, blessed to 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 be on certain stations already. Um, yeah. Of recent, you know, we've obviously been on Channel Four. We were on ITV, BBC, yeah. um, as well as you know, working with really great great brands as well. We've got a really interesting, sh a really big big shoot coming out in the next couple of weeks. We can't really reveal what it is yet, but okay. um, it's massive. So it's all right. We'll ask Gwen. Yeah, for sure. We'll definitely be on those shows soon, and that's what we're kind of pushing as well. Just more um, of the underrepresented chefs and foodies like us to be more in the mainstream. I don't know if you caught our Flavor Festival a couple of weeks ago. Um, which we had Ainsley Harriet there. Yeah, there you go. Wow, you guys are on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this, was you know, this was an amazing experience. Like our first ever, you know, big event. Mm. I was so happy to get all black, you know, foodie chefs, bakers together in one place and, you know, just produce an amazing event. You know, yeah. Ainsley was there. Couldn't believe it. Uncle Ainsley got him, got him involved, which is amazing. <laughs> and yeah, just, Trying to inspire the next generation, I think it's so important. I think that's a big um, vision of ours and our ethos is about, you know, helping the next generation yeah. of, you know, black chefs, foodies, or just people in general. Awesome! You're you you're hold you hold you're gonna bring everybody else up the ladder with you. Yeah, because it, it's. I mean, we we followed uh, Ainsley when he did his Caribbean series. We watch every single episode. That was really something to see what all the different islands were doing now and their, their take on different um foods that we take granted in certain parts of the caribbean and suddenly realizes that different islands do a different twist on on the same meal and he, and that series went down so well and now seeing you you guys uh doing your stuff with him you know we'd like to think he's saying look guys I'm, I'm pushing the ladder down to you guys to bring you up uh, so you can do the same to others and it's it's great to see the legacy being passed through the generations. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, you know, Ains is an amazing guy. You know, we never met him before, but you know, just seeing him on TV, we love his his character and his, you know, his like enthusiasm and food. Like he's such a lovely guy. The same how he's on camera, it's the same how he is, you know, in real life. And like, he's always supported our journey, always messaged us, you know. He sent up his he sent us his book saying, you know. Big up guys, you know, you're doing a great job. Like, love Uncle Ainsley, you know, that, that was... That was... <laughs> Uncle Ainsley, bless him. Do you know what? We're, we are getting lots of messages coming through from people. Yeah. We're going to share some of them with you. But just be, before we start, I just wanted to tell you something. We are working with a, a, a young mother by the name of Antoinette. I know she won't mind me saying her name, who contacted you guys asking... Um, if let me see she says please can you tell me when your vegan cookbook will be but will be available i'm currently having chemotherapy and would like to change my diet and you guys went back and said hey thanks for your message it should be out out by the end of september we support <laughs> you in your journey and god bless you and you're praying for her so I just wanted to say thank you so much for responding to someone who's going through a bit of a tough time at the moment, but you took the time to respond in the right way. And she's looking forward to your vegan cookbook. Amazing. Right. Yeah, there are lots of other messages coming through. Uh, thank you very much, Sharon, for reminding us. It was Rusty Lee. Rusty yeah, Lee. Was the chef. Chef. 
Have you heard of her? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She Craig, was, has, Craig is very quiet. Yeah. Craig has never heard of her. A TV show talking about the jerk rice and stuff like that. I remember. Yeah, she had she this, um, this um, laugh. infectious laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So this this particular meal, really, I, I looked oh. at it. I thought, this is different. I'm, I'm not. It's just totally different. The mix. The pastry looks divine. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. <laughs> We've done it for um, a partner that was like a, a really good zero waste um, championing brand. So they support basically just encouraging people not to throw away their food, not to throw away their leftover veggies or their mm. frozen chicken or or their chicken or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we came up with this um, this recipe here where you use your frozen chicken and you. Um, for it, defrost it, and also your leftover um, veggies that are in the fridge, like your carrots and your potatoes that are just sitting at the bottom of the fridge. Yeah. You know, just to switch it up a bit with an easy um, puff pastry on top of it as well. So it's Delicious. lovely. It Beautiful. looks divine. When we, when we shot that, literally in about half an hour, that thing was it's gone. gone. Like, <laughs> not surprised. <laughs> Normally, yeah. normally we don't really eat. The, sometimes, obviously, we, we test our yeah. food and stuff like that, but we kind of leave it for like our family or something like that. But this one, we literally just box well, I'm not surprised. What is all this cooking doing to your waistlines? <laughs> well, put on bare well, waist. We both had kids as well, so we, we, we got pregnant, as they say, you know. You know <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So you've, you've kind of got to find a balance, haven't you? Oh, that picture there, though, yeah. was, um, that was a while ago. Oh, right. That's it. What now? Get so much pictures of us. Yeah. We get. So that's that's you guys doing your, your your online stuff. Yeah, I think you know what I think it was um, for a, a, a BBC online show. Oh, that, oh yeah, yeah, like yeah a, it was. Yeah, I think it was for a BBC yeah. online show about three years ago, two years yeah. ago maybe. I think it was all about yeah. beef versus meat. Yeah. And, and the differences between two and yeah, yeah it's quite interesting that one. Yeah. Okay. So, so did, 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 just just ask again about um, the transition for you both because um, Sean, is it you that's a graphic designer by no, profession? Me. Right. You're you're a graphic graphic designer, and um, Sean, what what do you do? So I've worked with like youngsters and youth. Right. Uh, as a as a youth worker, I worked with elderly. I know you do you do some voluntary work as well, don't you? That's what it was all about. I yeah. was doing more, like you know, helping people with need and with cooking, um, supporting it's them. Fantastic! With, it, yeah. It's really fantastic because you you've both got these professions and yet you're doing this work as well. You suddenly find yourselves in front of a camera. Yeah. What I mean, it's just the stuff that that yeah. dreams are made of, right? Really, I mean, I tell you what. When I first got in front of the camera, man, I was very nervous. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I was never used to being in front of a camera. Yeah. But I told you, mate, that, like, practice definitely makes perfect. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Work, when you practice something, when you work on your craft, like, anything is possible. Yeah, like, absolutely. Was, absolutely. Like, <laughs> church days, like, yeah. it was always, like, you know. Yeah, I think from church, you know, when you grew up in church, you know, you know when you're young, you know, you're in like the children's choir and stuff like that. You kind of get exposed to speaking yes, because you're performing to an audience. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that I really learned those kind of like talking skills and speaking skills from that. Yeah. So yeah. I was quite comfortable, even though it was nervous telling people what people thought of our recipes and. You know those comments and online trolls yeah. and stuff like that. Initially, at the start, we you got some like really bad comments. Like, at the start. really? Yeah. yeah. Terrible. Because imagine you, it's, it, people don't like things that are new. Sometimes people don't like things that are new and different. So we got a lot of obviously people saying, you know, to London, why they can't cook? They're not from Jamaica. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you get like, neg negative comments. You know, you always get a few minority. Listen. From the minute you start to get negative comments, you know you're doing something right. So true. So, so true. Yes. So, so don't right. worry about them. No, never. At the, start, at the start, we were kind of like, oh, you know, it's your baby. You know, you 
take your time, mm -hmm. you know, long nights, you know what I mean, working on this thing, and then you get people just commenting. Yeah. Certain yeah. things and um but we, we never let it discourage yeah. us, you know. Yeah. We saw yeah. yeah. to yeah. just get better. Mm. We we kind of you know what I mean, just improve, progress, and just not don't don't care what the haters say, you know. Yeah, just, exactly. So, exactly. So Set, taking that that theme forward into present day scenario that we're all in right now in the, in the whole world, the whole planet, mm -hmm. we've got the situation, this dual situation of the COVID nineteen uh, situation, lockdown or not lockdown, depending where you are in the country at any given time. To the no, in the country, everybody's locked down. To a, yeah, to a degree, to the different levels, and then you've also got Black Black Lives Matter on top of that. Um, how have you guys coped with the pressure of trying to do what you're trying to do and so, and the COVID situation, the Black Lives Matter stance as everyone's taking, how have you coped with that, coped with that, especially since you do a lot of your communication online? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think, you know, because it is online, it it, ro it rolls our um, insights and our viewership and our attention actually increased because everyone was looking to cook during lockdown, you see. So at the time, the first lockdown, our, mm. our views literally just tripled. Wow. Um, you know, our following went up a lot, especially on Instagram, because yeah. a lot of younger people were looking to cook a lot more and try different things. So I think even though we did get a lot of cancellations with our um, supper clubs, we were doing a monthly supper club, mm -hmm. um, from, which started, it was very successful. It started like last year in November. Yeah, October, yeah. October, last year, October, and we've done it all the way through every month. Sometimes yeah, it got yeah. so popular. It was supposed to be once a month. Sometimes it got so popular, it'd be like twice or three times a month. Get sold out in the three days. It's really popular. Yeah. It's also amazing to meet, you know, all our followers. They'll come down, yeah. get a free course meal, meet us, you know, have a chat, which, which is amazing. But unfortunately, because of COVID, we had to, we had to stop that. Yeah. But we kind of just think on our feet. Yeah. Or think of what can we do now to mm -hmm. support people I and mean, we online was the best thing to do yeah right and did did black lives matter did it impact you in any shape or form in a, in a positive or negative way it's got to be positive surely yeah. i think definitely in a positive way mm. you know to see um you know what what was been happening through black lives matter only inspired us you know to you know to, to do better yeah that's right you know I mean? did it open up any doors for you um, you know what? I think a lot more people connected to us again. So we saw like a spike in followers and like a spike in, spike in people wanted to know more about their heritage through food. So I guess yeah. food one, is one aspect of um, understanding your heritage and your history, okay, yeah. your culture a lot more, so especially with our food as well. Yeah. Though we're young people, um, a lot of our foods are based on and show, tells a story about where they're from. So when we talk about, you know, the soups or oxtail, like Saturday or Saturday soup, we talk about where it came from, like when we were in um, slavery days where we were given the discarded, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the discarded, right. discarded yeah. like, you know, cow foot or that, mm. like the, the goat head. And <laughs> mm. it does sound amazing, but it just shows the, the sheer um, grit and determination that both when you struggle, we produce something that was um, a beautiful dish. That, um, yeah, that was edible. Yeah. Edible. That, yeah. That, 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 and that's what yeah. our descendants um, have always done. You, you, you're talking about food, and of course, you can then link it to, you know, we, we talk about uh, calypso music, and that came from an oil drum. Yeah. You know? yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. Wow. That is, that's what I'm thinking, that inventiveness. Wow. And, a, and a jerk pan as well came from there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I want to show. I want to show um, our viewers um, something that uh, a little clip of a recipe that you guys put together. Let me just have a look at this. Today we're going to be making. Today we're going to be making. Give it taste like milk. Taste like milk. It's it's like old fashioned Jamaican drink. Old fashioned Jamaican drink. Like always have. Always, 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 always tell me. Make always tell me. Make it strong. Make it strong. Please comment below. Please comment below. Like this page and let's get drinking. Let's get drinking.
I wanted to show that because we wanted to come onto the drink side of things. We've done the meats and and the veg vegan stuff, and now yeah. the, 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 the 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 rum punches and things, and uh, the different Guinness punch and and other types of punches that you guys have, have shown in your recipes and. Uh, it was interesting to watch that video, like how you put it all together. Is that again something that was that was passed down um, through your gran and your, and your mum? Everybody yeah. has Guinness yeah. punch. Oh, I know. But but is that your own? Is that your own recipe? Yeah, I think yeah, definitely. Um, the base of it, the foundation of the recipe, is uh, um, from grandma, our family. But we kind of put a twist on certain things, like I said earlier, to make it accessible to everyone. But yeah, it's definitely a family recipe because we used to have it. Every Christmas, like our auntie, <laughs> we still huddle together and make like a bowl yeah. of Guinness punch, like for Christmas dinner. You know, it was something that was a sacred, you know, something like we used to always do. And we had to put it in, in our recipes in our book, you know. No, we had like a me and my brother. I, I hate Guinness punch, I don't like it at all. I, I think it's a mature thing, it's just like a, it's it's a confusing mature thing, because it's <laughs> sweet, but then you get the bitterness as well. So you're not sure where your tongue is going, sort of thing, you know what I mean? You don't know where the taste yeah. buds are going. I'm a big fan of carrot juice, so my brother would make Guinness punch mm. and I would make carrot juice and my nan knew how to make. Mm. And I remember the first couple of years that we started to make it, um, our nan would, we always used to have to call up our nan the night yeah. before to find out, <laughs> to remind us of the recipe. <laughs> so do, do you still not like Guinness punch? I still don't like it. Don't you still like don't it. like it? Okay. Well, well, so Someone who loved punch, but not so much Guinness punch, was was our Daniel. Um, yeah. he, he very much loved um, pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. Pineapple punch. He loved pineapple. Amazing. Amazing. He used to stop at a takeaway place somewhere in Camberwell on his nights out yes. with yes. his mates. Bagel. The bagel. The bagel. Something. After the rain, oh, wow. Bagel King. Listen. Yeah. Bagel King. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. 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 of that place. And yeah, Bagel King was the iconic place for a lot of rave goers. Yes. Um, yes. To go at 4 a.m. Mm. Used to yeah. meet up and uh, just sober up with some food. <laughs> what, what was your memories of Daniel? I mean, I, I went I went to a holiday with Daniel, you know, um, not directly a holiday with him. But I met up with him there on, in 2007. Malia. It was actually my first holiday. I believe it was his first holiday as well. Ollie was there. Yeah, Ollie was yeah. there as well. Um, it was his first holiday without us. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember that, day, that holiday as well. Say again. Do you guys remember that holiday? When he went? We remember when he yeah, went, went on that holiday. Yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, I have yeah. so much memories, you know. Just seeing him, like every time I saw Daniel, he just brought so much energy and light to the place, you know. Mm -hmm. Always skanking, <laughs> always dancing to garage. Yeah. Yeah. Or a big yeah. park, you know, just bringing so much energy and love and light to the room. Oh, thank so you. Yeah. Him, so. I, met, I met Daniel probably about, only about two times, yeah. um, two or three times, but it was through uh, a friend called Ranjita. I'm not sure if you know Ranjita. Oh, oh, Ranjita, yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a good friend. Yeah, um, this is well, she's a good friend of mine. And whenever I met him, he was just you'll always remember it. Yeah. You'll always remember it. Like, all the time. Oh. You to hear good things about him musically and just being a nice guy. Um, and I knew that um, him and Jen were friends as well. So it was just always that positivity, mm. um, that you know, contagiousness of his smile, just his um good vibe as well so you know he was just a, a trailblazer to be honest you yeah. know way ahead of his time i believe mm. as well he's very multi-talented what i knew of him um mm. so definitely ahead of his time for yeah. sure thank well, you thank well, you well as, as you know he's he's our spearhead for the work that the aclt african caribbean leukemia trust does across various forms of the nation and because daniel needed not only a bone marrow stem cell transplant from the get-go Mm. But he also needed blood transfusions as part of his treatment, which was quite regular having I mean, blood transfusions. And in the end, he needed a, 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 an organ transplant. And that's that for us is that those, those three different forms of donation really does sort of um, spark us on to do more work for, for many other patients. Um, like, as you see on screen, 
uh, Antoinette, um, patient in need of a bone marrow stem cell transplant. Um, I think she's looking in, watching. So hi, hi, Antoinette. Hey, Antoinette. Yeah. Big hug to you, darling. Yeah. And uh, we've got little... Little Maya. Maya um, is a sickle cell patient who needs regular blood donations um, as part of her treatment, especially when she's having sickle crises. Um, so... Um, She's one of many sickle cell patients that the ACLT is working alongside to try and encourage more black and black mixed race people to mm. donate blood. Yeah, to to yeah. do this and, and get get going and make it more regular for the black community to go and give blood. A lot of one thing that people need to understand is that despite the fact we are on the, on the lockdown, you can still go and give blood. It's all done by um, social distancing. I've got mine uh, coming up in December. Yeah, and, and we need, people need to be giving blood um, so that people like Maya and other sickle cell patients mm -hmm. can get the best possible matched blood when they need blood transfusions. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's really important to not only, I mean, that's, that's my lapsed Anthony Nolan uh, stem cell bone marrow card. That's it's only lapsed because I've reached the age where you take you, they take you off. I'm proud of you. You know what they say, black don't crack. You know, get to donating, guys. You know, your blood could save lives. You know, for sure. yeah. so yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. It is. I bought the call. It's really important. You know. Thanks. Thank yeah. you. We're, we're also assisting, um, you know, the charity was set up to assist black and mixed race people, but actually we assist anybody that needs a bone marrow transplant, sorry, stem cell transplant, which is bone marrow, blood or organ donations. And this gentleman here, Peter McCleave, um, is of Chinese, Portuguese, English, Irish descent. He's very mixed and urgently needs a stem cell transplant to um, beat his blood cancer. So, you know, the, the work is extensive and we, we we assist anybody that needs help. Yeah, yeah. And this is Natasha. This is Natasha. Natasha Tuware. She's a, a beautiful lady who um, has a, had a career in singing, modeling, but sadly, she 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 her kidney failed, and she now needs a kidney transplant, either deceased or living kidney transplant, someone to try and so that she can get her life back, basically. Yeah. So. And um, organ donation is um, in in May of this year. The law changed that we are all deemed to be organ donors unless we choose to opt out. But we're asking people: do not opt out. When you pass away, you don't need your organs donate it so that someone can benefit from it yeah so that we can all have a donor card um and just keep it with us have a conversation with the family and uh, let them know if something ever did happen um don't let the worms or the incinerators take take hold of your, your organs um ethnic matching just like on stem cell bone marrow and on blood donation it's the same thing on, on the kidneys and liver. It's black to black, white, uh, white to white, and so on for the best matches. So yeah. we need more of us to stay in the system rather than knee jerk to, 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 to really negative WhatsApp messages that are going viral. We don't need that. We want it to be positive and stay in. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this, this beautiful little lady, we're actually going to show this little girl every week in ACLT in conversation with because this is Aurora. She's um, nine years old, nine years. nine years old, was diagnosed just this year with blood cancer and she urgently needs a stem cell transplant. And we're asking people to please visit our website, atlt.org, go to the stem cell, um, uh, stem cell page on our website to find out how they can just register by giving a cheek swab so that we can determine if you could be a possible match for this beautiful little girl who needs the assistance of anyone who is black, white, white Northern European, or a mix of both. You know, we can't let 
beautiful little angels like this beautiful little girl um, not get a match to save her life so so guys i mean do you do you have any views on 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 this these sort of subject matter i know it's different to what you you do but yeah. How aware are you in terms of the, the need? Yeah. Do people do, do people talk about it in any shape or form? What do, what do you hear on the ground? Yeah, I hear quite a lot. Um, <coughs> I'm actually sickle cell trait, so right. I was made aware when I was younger um, by my parents of um, the, the sickle cell condition and what you would need if you were, you know, going to the hospital or in need of oxygen, etc. That's right. So it's, it, I was aware of it quite, from quite young. Um, however, I, I, I kind of clued up a lot more as I grew up and I saw a few friends that had sickle cell trait or again, Daniel um, as well, his, his, his case as well, really did raise a lot of awareness within South London young people as well. So it's a massively important thing. And as we saw with Daniel, um, through, though he passed away way too soon, he left a yeah. massive legacy where literally the whole of oh, South yeah. London, um, people our age now know about um, bone marrow and blood and organ so, donations. Yeah. So yeah. he didn't die, he didn't pass away in, in vain. So yeah. he did leave a massive legacy and it's still going on and it will, yeah. to me, it will go on for many, yeah. many years. You guys are flying the flag, you know, um, we're here to support that as well. You know, you guys are leaving a legacy as well bringing great awareness, you know, to the stem cell, but bone marrow donor. Um, just want to touch on also our, our cousin, um, Aaron, also went through, I don't know, you, you, might, you may know Aaron, I don't know, he's our cousin. He actually what, shared- what is, Oh, Aaron, should we play his surname? I don't Aaron, know. He actually um, was next door to Daniel during his time um, of illness. Um, our cousin, Aaron Mitchell, he went through a, a ML, I believe. Yeah. AML, yeah. yeah, acute myeloid leukemia. He was on chemo for about six months. Right. He was going through it, but he he saw Daniel was what, quite in a bad um, in a bad state. Um, but they were, used to always talk together. Oh, and, wow. and so yeah, I, I've been chatting to Aaron about it, his time, and he said it was a really tough time, like seeing Daniel and stuff like. But he always stayed strong, like even though yeah. was weakness. And, and uh, Aaron's okay now? Aaron's okay now, you were coming. Oh, good. Good. oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, bless him. He's oh, fine. Please. Now, uh, but he was please. always very kind and he's, you know, he always speaks about Daniel well. Yeah. And, you know, talks about how he, how strong he was. And he oh, never gave up at the end. You know, so, oh, you know, he really yeah. goes to us as, as a, a cousin. So we know how you feel. Of you can't tell how you feel because you, you, your, your son passed away, but. No, no, we understand. He didn't, pass away, he didn't pass away in vain. You know, everyone remember Daniel's name in good light. Um, and me, yeah. I met him. You yeah. know, it's an honor to meet him. And yeah, it, it's, it's an honor to be his parents, I can tell you. It's a yeah. real honor. Please, yeah. please pass on our thank you to your cousin for yes. being of oh. support. Because uh, we, we, yeah. it's interesting, over the many years, we've heard so many stories of things that, that Daniel was involved in and befriended or I was befriended him that they become legend um, over the years because it's just like there was a side that we never saw but everyone's talking about him in, in, in their relationship with him which is always the same with children outside of their parents it's a different world different life but it's just hearing what you're saying about Aaron and, and how he's related to Daniel and what he saw and felt and being in a mutual journey as well that that means a lot to us. Oh. Yeah, they were literally there at the same time. Hopefully we'll get to meet him one day, actually. Sorry? Hopefully we'll get to meet him one day. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know um, Timothy, our uncle Timothy, Timothy Mitchell. So if you might, maybe by face. I don't, face, I don't can't think of the name. He, he passed away recently. Um, okay. But he was um, Aaron's father. Oh. He was a big person, you know, oh. one of those okay. days. But I remember my face. So what, what day you meet? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so going going forward, as we head towards Christmas and into the new year, um, which is obviously coloured by the whole um, COVID nineteen situation, what plans do you have in mind that you can divulge? Tell us about your new book. 
<laughs> can't say too much. Can't yet, say too much. Yet. Can't say too much. Okay. A little insight. <laughs> okay. All right. Not coming out anytime, anytime soon. Um, initially, it was an ebook. Um, and then we were planning it to re- release it ourselves, but then we we got a publisher for the second book, which is the yellow book, the original flavor, and um, they want to um, we're doing it with them now, so it's going to be a bigger, better book. Um, it's going to touch on a lot of different things: wellness, mental wellness as well within the black community. Um, it's going to touch on um, you know the roots of Itao as well, just and also just the everyday you know ordinary person that's looking to have a more vegetarian or um, balanced balanced Uh, balanced transition or not even transition the word called flexitarian yeah which uh, (laughs) be interested yeah so we're we're just basically about just bringing flavor to your your vegan life or your veggie life the same way how you marinate your meat marinate your vegetables so with that's really our target audience as well right What's your view on how Caribbean food is profiled and respected in the uh, the, la- the, the the cooking landscape? What's the what's the, the view? I believe that it's they just think it's all about jerk chicken. Mm. When really it's it's not. There's there's so much. So much, more, so much the, the array of Caribbean fruits, vegetables that myself and my brother, we kind of delve into and you know, experiment with. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about creativity when it comes to vegan food and, you know, in cooking in general. But I, I believe that the mainstream just always know about jerk chicken and curry goat, but as I say, there's so much more. So much um, more to it. And we're, we're going to show that, you know, as much as we can, you know, because we believe that, you know, it's a, Caribbean food is such a broad um, spectrum of foods, not just Jerk chicken, and then yeah. So, so do you see as a case of as as you've shown in some of the uh, recipes that we showed on screen, taking a generic uh, type of uh, meals and then really putting a, a spin on it in terms of making it palatable to a wider audience without losing the the authentic you know the, the authentic way of how we cook cook it, how we prepare it, how we marinate because. No one mar- marinates food like, <laughs> like black people to the to the degree um, that we, we do, and and then yeah. we enjoy it. So it's a slow burning effect, and then, wow, well, then you get the real best out of it. That's right. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what we're exactly what we're trying to do. Um, you know, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Really, we're trying to um, show how easily accessible it is for everybody. Show how easily it is and how tasty it is as well, because a lot of people just you know have those um, negative connotations to, you know, vegetarian foods. It's very boring, it's very bland, you know. It's, but with us, it's about adding that flavor um, yeah. to it as well, you know, adding the flavor, because you can. It's, honestly, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a meat lover, for sure. But honestly, yeah. the best ever meal that I've had is in the grill Jamaica, and it was an Ita meal. It's the best oh. ever oh. I've ever had. And from that moment, I kind of looked at vegetarian food a whole lot differently. I still eat my meat, don't get me wrong. I still love my mark still and, the, you know, the curry goat. You, and can, do, you can do vegan up stuff. Sometimes. You can do vegan up <laughs> um, It was just so clean. It was so filling, but it wasn't maybe bloated. It was yeah. enjoyable. It was an enjoyable experience. Yeah. And that's what we were um, yeah. portray as well. And I think also my, my experience, I, I went vegan for 10 months. Mm-hmm. Oh. In a couple of years ago, and I think my brother seeing me doing that as well definitely inspired him. Um, Why did mother. you do it for just ten months? Why did you go back? I mean, I, I initially wanted to do it for a week. <laughs> oh, so you did well then? <laughs> I, I, months, and I, I can tell you that it was one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. being in the kitchen and being so creative, eating vegetables I never eaten before. And you know, being able to season those vegetables the way I'll do meat. Did you I'll feel do- different eating without yeah. no meat? I don't do that in the pictures, but <laughs> I'm, I'm putting a bit of weight since I've gone back to the dark side. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I was, you know, what I mean, like, I lost so much weight. I was, I, I, I felt so amazing. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I'd love to go back to doing fully vegan. Yeah. I understand yeah. it's so 
Well, we might join you. We might it's join you. It's about getting a balance, he said. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got a fun, I've got a fun question for you. Um, do you or do you not wash your chicken before you cook it? <laughs> you know what? I, I wash my chicken. I, you know what? I, I half and half. I half and half. When I say half and half, I don't just put it under the tap and so I kind of like clean it with vinegar and um lime, yeah. and lime and stuff and i kind of like the taste of the vinegar and lime as well it's, acid, it's, acid, nice, it's yeah. kind of nice and it kind of flattens the spice as well as well so i don't just put it so i know traditionally you know you kind of back in the day my grandma used to get the nice cake really scrape off every kind of dead skin really? yeah man and wash it under like that my oh, grandma oh. like, like that side used to like burn off the hairs on the fire, open fire. Just, yeah. oh, my mum used to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. In fact, I think people still do that to this yeah, day. Right the fire, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. I, we don't go that deep, but in terms of like cleaning it with, you know, vinegar and like, right, yeah. 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 sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So just as we come close to the end, guys, um, just want to show uh, our, our viewers who, um, who's coming up uh, next week. Uh, Ace of One Extra. Um, <laughs> We got Ace. Yeah. And yeah. um, he'll be with us uh, talking about his career, but also about his urgent need to find a matching living or deceased kidney donor because he's on dialysis four times a week, yeah. uh, four hours, and it is um, taking a, quite a toll on his quality of, of life and his quality of mental. And so it's a, it's a long battle, but he's very much an, an advocate to trying to get people, especially our people. Yeah. To stay in the system and to uh, see if they, you know, down the line, they can be of, of service to, to either him or to someone else. Yeah. So you know, we we've got Ace on board. Um, we've got a few other people. I'll I'll, I'll show you as as well. Uh, the following right. week, the following week, the nineteenth of November, we welcome Ade Adepitan, who is a broadcaster, presenter, and Paralympian. Yeah. I'm going to be speaking to him about his career and his association with ACLT Charity. Yeah. Following week, we're going to be Thursday, Audrey. 26th of November. Yeah, Audrey Indome from the Receipts Podcast. Audrey. Very much a key influencer on, on social media. Do you know her? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't know her personally, but I know who she is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like you, like you guys on, on social media, very much a trailblazer. Yeah. 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 Sure. And there she is with uh, her colleagues. And then our very last guest, but not least guest, will be George the Poet, who is an ACLT Youth Ambassador. Um, we're going to be speaking to George about his career and um, his association with ACLT and why he thinks the work that we do is so vital and important. Yeah, so really it's a, it's a case of, as it says in the slide, a call to action to, to people and say, look, are we ready to really take this on board? as um to try and help each other and utilize all the different platforms um to um make a difference whether it be food or as last week we had alicia dixon on in terms of entertainment and we got ace next week in terms of music again and spoken word and, and the, the vehicles you guys use to project such uh excellence in your fields we take it up to you, and we just great that you associate with what we're trying to do, and to to ex to expose to the masses. Look, we can help each other on our different platforms uh, because we are one. We just have different journeys to trying to become excellent and to leave legacies for the future. Legacies in terms of what we're doing in terms of saving lives, and what you guys are doing through food, filling our bellies. <laughs> <laughs> The pleasure, Mark. Yeah. You so guys much, are guys. doing awesome work. Yeah. And guys, in the comments, please donate, support ACLT um, how you can, when you can. Absolutely. Oh, bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And let's just give a final word to the um, GoFundMe page that you guys have got. Do you want to just give everybody a bit of a, give that a mention, please? Yeah, so we're doing a um, crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo to support, you know, underrepresented and black chefs you know, to through cooking courses, mentorship, um, you know, just basically just taking them under our wing and just helping them, you know, get to the next level. If they're interested in cook, cooking, food, 
or they want to be chefs, just you know, just helping them on their journey. Yeah. Um, you know, building a studio. Yeah. Because you know, it's tough. It's tough for it's tough for black people, underrepresented people in the community. Yeah. Um, to get to that next level, because we yeah. found it hard growing up, but we want to give that helping hand to the next generation who may not get to have have the you know facilities or you know as, as normal. So. So yeah. what's the what's the GoFundMe page? What's the address? So if you just go to Indiegogo, um, Indiegogo.com, and just type in on the search original flavor, you should right. be able to see it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to basically get more chefs that look like us in the mainstream and on the bigger platforms. Brilliant, brilliant. Well done, guys. Well, well done. done. Well, we'd just like to say on behalf of um, Beverly, myself, and everyone that we represent at the ACLT, the African Caribbean Leukemia Trust, it's um, been an absolute honor and pleasure to have you guys um, uh, trailblazers in what you're doing um, on, on this conversation with the ACLT. We really appreciate you taking time out to be with us. We appreciate the viewers uh, who are watching live and to the viewers who are gonna watch it later on on YouTube and, and Facebook, please spread the message. Uh, about and, and and push these two young men even further up the, yes, the ladder, yes. uh, so that they can um, bring others with them. You need starters, and these are the, these are the kickstarters uh, for for this. So please support them. Yeah, and That's when cool. lockdown is finished and yeah. you start doing your gatherings again, yeah. please put two seats aside for us to. Yeah, we got you guys definitely. Vegan <laughs> <laughs> seats, yeah. Both of you? Yes, yes. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you so thank much. You, thank you thank so much. You. And have a good evening and goodbye to everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Bye bye.